Hello and welcome to Profile, the arts program that looks at New Zealand and sometimes overseas artists as well. Well, of all the CVs of all the artists we've had on this series, today's profiled performer may well have the most extensive of them all. There's a long list of orchestras he's worked with, from the Czech Republic through to Hong Kong, the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, and many orchestras in Australia. For many years, he was music director and principal guest conductor of the Christchurch Symphony. Recently, he's taken up the role of music director of the Vector Wellington Orchestra. He's made many CDs, and his work with the Wellington Orchestra next year looks very exciting indeed. Meet Mark today. Conductor, here in conversation with Kerry Stevens. Mark, where in the United States did you grow up? I was born and raised in New Jersey, uh, a satellite commuter town just out of New York. Was music in your background right from the beginning? No, it wasn't, though uh, both of my parents were interested in it. Uh, I think the reason I got into music was because at an early age, the school system that I found myself in had a very strong music department. Did you have to choose an instrument or did they choose one for you? When I was in fifth grade, that is when I was 11 years old, uh, we were able to uh, uh, join the band or the orchestra. And uh, well, it was a band at that point. And uh, so I went in to the, the music room and met my first teacher, one of the inspirations for my musical life. And I said, I'd like to play an instrument. And he showed me all various different kinds of instruments. And one of them was, uh, uh, the baritone horn or eu euphonium with the bell four. It's quite an American looking instrument. It looks like a, a tuba and at that stage it was quite a bit smaller so it was an enormous instrument. I thought that's for me. It's a really wonderful looking instrument and I love the sound of it as well. So I picked the euphonium. Did you have parents that said well if you go to university, you go through college, you, you study real stuff, don't study music? Well no. Basically, uh, I was 11 when I started playing, and two years later, I decided that this is what I want to do. Um, I had aptitude on the euphonium, but to be a professional euphoniumist, is that a word? Um, there's not much you can do, really, um, professionally uh, in the States. I suppose you could join the Marine Band, but I'm more of a make love, not war kind of guy. So I decided, well, the easiest instrument to switch to would be the trombone because the mouthpieces were the same. I was also playing the double bass at that point. And you went to Juilliard? Yes, I did. Eventually? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. And that was always something you were going to do, to go that far with your music? <clears throat> yes, yes. When I got, uh, as I said, when I was in seventh grade at 13, I, I decided music was what I wanted to do. I picked the trombone. I, I switched over to the trombone. And I was taking lessons with members of the New York Philharmonic and the Metropolitan Opera. And, uh, and then my last two years of university, I'm uh, sorry, last two years of high school, I went to this Saturday morning program at, at the Juilliard School of Music. So every Saturday I was up at 6.30, went to New York and had a full day um, playing the orchestra, the repertoire classes, taking lessons, theory, ear training, et cetera, et cetera. When you graduated, you looked around the world and said, well, here I'm young, I'm, I've got, gotten the ticket now, I can see the world. And you chose New Zealand? Well, <clears throat> when you're in the States, uh, if, if you're a professional musician, you belong to various unions, and you, as, as a consequence, you get the union paper that has all the job applications. And I was applying for jobs here and there. I was doing very well freelancing and getting very close for a number of jobs. Uh, and the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra job came up so I, I made a tape and uh, it was interesting I was I was working with the Queen's Philharmonic and one of the bass players there was Bob Adair who's married to Alexa Still and I was mentioning during the, the period that I was auditioning for the orchestra so oh yes I'm making a tape for the New Zealand Symphony and Bob's ears picked up and said oh really well my wife has just been appointed principal flute and uh, it's a wonderful orchestra etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, so that piqued my interest further, so when it turned out that the orchestra was interested in my tape, uh, I was ecstatic, they flew me out, and I figured, well, if they don't like me or I don't like them, I get a, a month-long holiday in New Zealand. And uh, luckily they like me and I like them, and um, I've been here ever since. And you like New Zealand, otherwise you I love New Zealand. gone somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Principal trombone in the NZSO. That's correct. How long did that last? I joined in 1987 and I resigned in 2000. 
You resigned because somewhere along the line, you decided no conducting is the thing I really want to do. That's right. I don't want to play the trombone anymore. Well, maybe yes, but so what sparked your interest in conducting? That's a good question. I, I need to go back to the Saturday morning programs at Juilliard. Uh, I had been playing in bands, all state orchestras in New Jersey, and as I said, my school system in the town that I grew up in had a wonderful program. Uh, and, and a very good, for a high school orchestra, very, very good. But when I got to the Juilliard Pre-College, I'll never forget the very first rehearsal, Roger Nirenberg was conducting. He was a bit of an inspiration to me, all of us at the Juilliard Pre-College. And uh, it was Beethoven V, and the trombone's playing The Last Moon, Beethoven V, so I have three moments to sit there. And I'll never forget him putting down his hand and then hearing uh, an orchestra sound that I had never associated with young musicians before. I mean, to me, it sounded like the New York Philharmonic or something like that. Oh my God, this is amazing. And, and I thought, what kind of alchemy is this guy producing to, to garnish a great sound from the orchestra? So that's where I started really noticing this correlation between the gesture of a conductor and the sound an orchestra makes. It's not something that I noticed in the high school orchestras in New Jersey, but uh, this, this Juilliard Pre-College Orchestra was quite an extraordinary youth orchestra at the time. And Roger, it was, just, it was just a match made in heaven in terms of the inspiration that he provided all of us young players. Well, there you are playing the trombone in the end of the so. Yes. And the chance must have come somehow, sometime, to conduct. That's right. Um, I harbored aspirations ever since um, seeing this, this wonderful relationship that a conductor can have with orchestras and music. And in fact, when I was at Juilliard, I started conducting with Roger as well. Uh, so when I got the NZSO job, I was ecstatic, of course. I loved the trombone, I loved playing in orchestras. I loved that feeling of collegiality that exists in an orchestra, this idea of a, a disparate group of people, you know, that, that get together in rehearsal and concert to make something beautiful, sort of 